Hey everyone, in this video I'll be going through a Python script that downloads all the airfoils from the UIUC airfoil database. I need these airfoil DAT files for my upcoming videos on the derivation and coding of both source panel methods and vortex panel methods. I'm going to be showing you this script using Spider, which you can find if you download the Anaconda Navigator, which you can see on the screen right here, and then you launch Spider from there. Over here, you click Launch, and it brings up this uh, window. And it's nice because I can quickly show you the variables. So if you go over here, and you click on the tab Variable Explorer, they'll pop up here when I save them. And when I finish talking about the script, I'll just run it from the command window to show you how easy that is too. First, we need to import some stuff that we will use. So we'll import beautiful soup uh, to parse the web page. We'll also import regular expressions so that we can grab only the links that match the file type that we want. And then we will also need to import the URL lib package, which handles working with URLs. And this just makes sure that it'll work with, uh, with whichever version of Python that you're running. Now that we have everything imported that we need, we can move on to the actual code. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is prescribe the base path of the website. And this is the path that all other links are referenced off of on this site. So to see this, let's go to the actual site. OK, so here is the Airfoil database website. Let me just orient you really quickly. Uh, down here, we have useful sources or mirrors. Then we have archives. Then we have an update directory, which includes these DAT files. These are actual airfoils, but they're not yet included in the archives above or the A to Z listing below. And then we have the A to Z directory. So the goal uh, that we want to accomplish is to download every single DAT airfoil file from this website. Now you might be looking at this URL right here and saying that this does not look like the base file path that I specified in the code. And so to show why I only choose this as the base file path, note that this says core database.html. And let's go down to what we want to uh, get from the website. So if I open up these, like one of these files right here, you'll note that it switches to coord underscore updates and then the file name. Okay, so that's different here. And then also, if I go to a different one down in the A to Z directory, then it just says coord without the updates and then the file name. And so the base file path that never changes is this. Okay, now we're back over in the script. And the first thing that we're going to do is open the web page using URL open with the website URL as the argument. And then we will then parse the web page using beautiful soup uh, and store that in a variable called soup. This next section is where we loop through the HTML to find the DAT files we are looking for and save them to an appropriately named file. The variable end is just used as a counter to show progress in the command window. And we also initialize uh, a list called links that we will append to. And note that this is not technically needed, but we can see the list of links we will be outputting before going through all the approximately 1,580 of them. And it'll pop up over here so we can take a look at that. Now before we go into the for loop, uh, we're going to go back to the web page. And to look at the source, at least in Google Chrome, you press Control u And this brings up the page source, or the HTML. And so if we scroll down, we can see a lot of stuff happening. Uh, but let's get to where the airfoils start. So you can see that they start here with the DAT files. And so what we're going to want to do in our loop is to search through every single link A that has the attribute href including the .dat. And then what we want to do is go into, so essentially we're going to want to click into that DAT file and then save the data in here to the same exact file name. So then what we're doing here on this line is saying, OK, loop through that entire soup HTML and give me uh, and find all the links. And that's what the A is for. And so in those links, find the attribute href and only give me the ones where, the, where in that href uh, we find .dat. And now you might be asking why all that's needed. And so let me just uh, comment this out, and I'm just going to copy that same thing and bring it down here. But now I've deleted this ignore case, and I've also deleted this slash right here. So if we run this, you can use uh, function f5, or you can run it up here. So if I run this, you'll see the variables pop up over here. And so we're going to open up links. And so if I open up links like this, and then you can scroll down all the way to the end, and you can see there's uh, 1584 elements. Now what you'll see is that these are the links that we will then go into using the base file path. But there's a couple of these that we don't want. So this one we don't want. That's not an actual DAT file. This is not a DAT file. There's also another one in here. There's a PDF file. So the question is, why are these showing up? The reason is that the dot uh, is matched with any character. And so uh, we actually need to use an escape character, which is the slash, so that we don't get stuff that has uh, DAT in it. So that's where this comes from, because it has a DAT in it. And also the first two, DAT and DAT. 
So let's fix that by adding the escape character. So I'll just click here and add that in, and I'm gonna run this again. And now we can open up links again, and you can see that we don't have those folders that we don't want, and if you look through this, the PDF's also gone. However, now you'll note that we're missing the uppercase DAT files, because now it's saying match exactly .dat, and it's matching the lowercase DAT, but not the uppercase DAT. And so the last thing we need to do is add in that ignore case. So I'm just going to comment that out and comment this back in. So if we add in the uh, regular expression dot ignore case, then it'll take in any case for the dot DAT. And if we run this and it finishes, then we can click on links again. And now you can see it's including the uppercase DATs and the lowercase DATs. So now that we saw that we are getting all the links that we want, now we need some way to save it to a file as we loop through. So we're going to use URL retrieve. And if we go to uh, the Python website here, you can see the URL retrieve up here, where it takes in an argument URL and then the optional file name. So the second argument, if present, specifies the file location to copy to. So in here, what we're doing is we're inputting the URL, and that's from the base file path, like this, and then we're appending the link that we got from the links list. And then we're saving it to the file path that's here. So we're taking that link that's from the links list, and what our split does is it splits uh, each of these into, uh, it splits them at this uh, character, and then it's taking the last portion of it. So essentially what it's doing is it's splitting it here and then saying, I want to save it to this right here. So if all, for all of these, it's saving it to the actual uh, file name uh, where they're stored on the website, which is what we want. And this will save it to the same directory that this particular Python script is located in. And then finally, this is just printing out to the, to the command window the uh, file index that we're on, and then this increments the index counter. And now I'm over in the folder where I have the get save airfoils Python file, and I can open this up in Notepad. And this is why the uh, this is why these comments were kind of out of sync in Spider. It was because I lined them up here in Notepad, and it was a little bit different in Spider. But I've commented out the links here and commented out this line because we don't need it when we're going through the actual saving. And so what we can do is go back to that folder, and I can press Shift, right click, and I open command window here. And then in here, all you need to do is type in Python, and then the name of the file, and then press Enter. And then you can see that it's saving the files and telling us, and this will take a little while, so I'm going to fast forward. OK, so you can see that it finished. And if we go into that directory again, you can see all of the files here. And that took about five minutes in total, but once you download the entire database once, you won't need to do it again. So that's how you can download the entire UIUC Airfoil database to your computer. Uh, if you want this code, you can either pause the video and just copy it over because it's only a few lines, or I will also post this on my website or GitHub or wherever. Thanks for watching.